Are you a crafter looking to be able to make your own SVGs, trace or from scratch, and for free? Let me introduce you to Inkscape. This is going to be your new best friend. Simply download it from their website, inkscape.org. Here, click on the download button and it'll suggest what's the best platform for your computer. Download the installer package. It's available for Linux, Windows, and Mac. Once it's installed, open the file and follow the install process. Then open up a new program and start a new document. Now we need to find a coloring page. I like coloring pages because the outlines come out nice and clear. The larger your image, the more clear your results are gonna be. Once you find the image you like, if you select it, you can view the details. Hovering over it will show you the size. Anything over a 640 renders really good results. Now I'm gonna right click it and copy the image. Back in Inkscape, I'm gonna right click again and then paste that image. You can also control V on your keyboard. Next on the keyboard, I'm gonna press the number three and this is doing view, zoom, zoom in on selection. It's just gonna fill up my image in my screen. When you hover over your selected object, the status bar will tell you what the object type is. In this case, I know I just imported an image, but that's all it is, it's just an image. It's not a cut file, it's not ready. So next, let me show you how to convert that image to an SVG file. Once it's imported, I'll select the image and go to Path, Trace Bitmap. And this is gonna trace your bitmap and create one or more paths. Because it's a single color, we're gonna use the single scan option to make one path, and we're gonna leave all the defaults the same. And if you use a nice large image, that should be suffice. Then I'm gonna click Apply. I'm gonna hide my Edits panel just so that I have more screen space. The trace sits right on top of your image. And remember, if you hover over the status, it'll tell you what the object type is. So I'm going to move one over so that I can reveal both of them. And now my status tells me this is a path with 646 nodes. So that's my cut file. I no longer need my image, so I'm going to right click on it and just delete it. The SVG is now ready. Let's go upload this into Design Space and see where we're at so far. So I'm going to select Upload Image, find my file, and because it's an SVG, no cleanup is needed, just save it and upload. Add it to your canvas, size it as desired, and then click Make It. Follow the on-screen instructions from here. Now, it is just one outlined image. Let's go back into Inkscape and separate this into multicolored layers. I'm going to duplicate my outline by right-clicking and selecting Duplicate. Move it over so that I can reveal both. Now I'll select one outline, go to Path, and Break Apart. This is going to separate my SVG file into subparts. So now you can see my status as I have 31 individual pieces. I'm going to now select my other outline, and I'm going to change the color. The color doesn't really matter, it's just so that I can see it more when I move my silhouette next to it. Those two pieces are going to serve as my base. Now I'm going to apply color to all my individual pieces. We just need to select each piece and then click on the color from the color panel. To select multiple objects at the same time, you can hold shift and select each object. You can also drag over multiple objects at the same time. Apply the color as needed. Now we're going to clean up some of the objects. Here the nostril piece is also separated from the face. I don't need them on their own, so I'm going to cut them out. To do that, I can only cut two objects at a time, so I'm gonna weld them together by doing path and union. Now I need to move them to the top layer because when I do difference, path and difference, it's gonna take whatever's at the top and cut it out of my bottom layer. Now I have just the face and the nostril pieces cut out. Repeat that process for any remaining layers. Now my multi-layer SVG ready. Next, let's go ahead and cut up this file so that we can do a larger than matte project. This is where the larger than matte magic happens. And if you already have an SVG file, anyone you have ready, you can start from right here. 
So preparing the base is two part. I have an outline and I have a silhouette. Now we're gonna do a process I called S squared, score and slice. So I have a silhouette base piece, which is gonna cut, and I have an outline of my design, which is going to score. This is gonna help with alignment, so I know exactly where all my pieces go. So in order to cut this up, it needs to fit your Cricut Design Space mat. So if you have a 12 by 24 mat, then you can cut 11.5 by 23.5. So I'm gonna create a rectangle and size it to my mat, and then I'm gonna use it to line up against my object. Now I'm gonna duplicate this, and I'm gonna create a pattern by adding it right above the first square. And I'm just gonna alternate the colors so that I can see the pattern. So duplicate it and align it, duplicate it and align it. Now I'm going to union my pattern. So remember, you can only cut two pieces at a time. So I'm going to weld all of my like colors by doing path and union. And repeat that to each color so you have two sets of patterns. Now I'm gonna duplicate each design piece. So I should end up with two outlines, two silhouettes, and two pattern sets. And you wanna make sure your pattern is set to the bottom so that you can see everything. Now I'm gonna do path intersection. And that takes whatever the objects overlap and it keeps that. Everything else it gets rid of. So we're gonna start on the left side and I'm gonna select the outline and the yellow pattern and click on path and intersection. Now my remaining pieces are at the bottom and I'm gonna leave it there for now. I'll go to the right side and repeat it, select the outline, but this time I'm gonna select the red pattern. Do path and intersection. Repeat that with the silhouette, red, path and intersection, select the yellow side, path and intersection. I'm now left with two pieces for each corresponding object. I'm gonna select both of my silhouettes and change the color so that they're unison. Now I'm gonna split them apart. Remember, we sliced them with a welded pattern, so these two large pieces are welded together. So going to path and split path, that will separate them. I'll repeat the process, change the outline to gray, go to path and split path. Now, any parts that are free floating, like the eyeball and the nostril, they're gonna also separate. So you need to select those and union them together. So align all the corresponding pieces and center them together. So I'll have an outline and I have a silhouette for each piece. Finally, I need to make sure all of my color pieces are also gonna fit on the mat. So I need to measure all of them and I'm gonna click M and then hover over each object. This will show you what the width and the height is. So this 10 by seven is gonna fit on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Go ahead and find the size for each object and slice where needed. Here at the face, I have a 17 by 15. It's not gonna fit anywhere. I'm gonna use a circle to cut it apart. And I'm gonna use path and division. I'm gonna align the circle right over the cheek and I'm using a circle so that it kind of follows the shape of the cheek and it looks like it's there for a reason. I'll then select the circle and the face and hit division. Just make sure that the circle is on top because it's going to cut whatever the bottom layer is. Here it's gonna separate that where that circle path met and now it took that one large piece and cut it into three pieces that are now gonna fit on my mat. So I'm gonna repeat the slice process on all of my pieces that are too big. Rotate them where necessary. Here, I was gonna cut the white, but I noticed if I rotated it, it actually did fit the parameters. So if you leave it rotated and send it to the mat, you'll be just fine. Now my larger than mat file is 100% ready to go. Let's go ahead and upload it into Design Space and prepare it to cut. Uploading the file into Design Space again, we're just gonna upload it. And because it's an SVG file, we don't have to clean it up. It's just cut ready. All my layers are ready to go. They're all in a group. Here, the first thing we're gonna do is select all the outline pieces, and we're gonna change the operation from a cut to a score. 
Repeat that to all of your layers, and because the score lines are black, it's hard to see it on a black silhouette. So I'm going to change the color of the silhouette. Whatever color you choose, it doesn't matter as long as you cut on black material. Now I'm going to attach all of those corresponding pieces for the base and the outlines and select attach. You should end up with four separate attached pieces. My file is now ready, so I'm going to click make it and send it to the mat and just follow the on-screen instructions. Here you can see that S square process where we have the score and then slice and that's because it's going to score my outline and then cut my base piece. That's going to allow me to have some registration marks so I might know exactly where to glue on these colored layers. So I'm using green, black, and white poster board. I could have also used red and yellow but I didn't need it so large, so I just used a 12 by 12 and then two brown pieces of 8 by 11. Why poster board? These are larger than matte, so the larger the paper and the more sturdier the paper, the better. Also, I get a two for one and they're pretty cheap. One 22 by 28 poster, I can cut them in half and make either two 11 by 28 or two 14 by 22s. So the larger the paper you have, the less seams you have. The one downside about using this paper is that the core of the paper is white. So any imperfections in the seam make it a little bit more visible. What happens if you don't have poster board? That's not a problem. What you can do is tape three regular 8 by 11 pieces of paper together. Now when it cuts, they will have seams, but they will be a little bit less visible and already pre-attached. And the plus side, you don't have to configure these extra cuts into your design project. Now that everything's all cut out, I'm gonna just tape them all together and make my base of my design. I'm just gonna use masking tape. I'm not really worrying about it being too pretty. It's just the back. In the front, you can see all the score lines that have been scored onto the base. This is gonna give you an exact position of where to place all of these pieces. I have them all pre-taped from the back with double-sided tape. Normally I like using a tape gun, but my tape runner was empty. Again, because those score lines are in place, I can start at any point in the project and just put them in place. Tape them from the back, assemble it all, and you're done. If that was helpful to you, don't forget, like, follow, share, and subscribe.